In this video, we'll talk about using the fault tolerant features from VMware. We have a VM created. We have a, a cluster called DRSHA cluster, and we have three hosts in this cluster. We're going to use the VM VM17-1, which is currently highlighted to demonstrate the fault tolerance features. Now, in this particular case here, what we're going to do is simply turn on VMware fault tolerance, and you'll see that it's not going to work because we have a few things that we need to do. So let's go ahead and set up these things here and we will get it working. So a couple of things that we need to do, we need to configure the fault tolerant VM kernel port by going into networking and then we'll find an available VM kernel port. We have several different ports available here and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go create a new virtual switch with the VM kernel port. We'll just call this FT and we'll use this for fault tolerance logging. So we're going to create a dedicated one then we'll give it an IP address. Then we'll set this up on this host as well and then we'll do the third host as well. We could also do this on a distributed switch if we wanted to. Now we're going to check the cluster to make sure it's enabled for HA. And it's not, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. I'm not going to specify any options, and that will need to be configured through all of our hosts. All right, now let's go ahead and click on that VM and see what errors we get. And what this is saying is that the fault tolerance will only support thick provision virtual disks. So if we look at this particular virtual machine, let's see how the disks are currently provisioned on it and you'll see that they're currently thin provision. So we'll need to change this disk over here to a thick provision virtual disk. Let's go ahead and click on this here, see the errors that we get. Ah, now here you'll see that this VM is actually on a local drive, so we uh, need a VM that can be on a shared drive. So let's go ahead and we'll storage vMotion this, and we'll put it on a shared drive here. And then we're gonna go ahead and change it to thick provision eager zero. That's going to need to be done, so might as well do it sooner rather than later. And that's going to move that. This is a fairly small VM, so it'll go fairly quickly. All right, so that's moved to a shared storage. So let's go ahead and look at it now, and you'll see the errors that we'll get here. You see we no longer get the error about needing to change the thick provision. All right, and now we get some recommendations here from the host. I'm going to go ahead and cancel these you'll see this is the secondary VM. The reason we have this is for DRS is currently set up and we're getting a DRS for a DRS recommendation on where to place it and the reason we get that is because DRS is set up in a manual mode. We'll go ahead and power that on. You'll see it's starting the fault tolerance secondary. I'm going to go ahead and remove fault tolerance and let's go look at a few things. So let's turn off fault tolerance here and let's do a couple of different things after this is turned off. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and open a console to this virtual machine. And then we're going to connect to a website. And we're going to display a video on this website. And I, I want to display a couple interesting things here that's, that are going to happen while we're displaying this video. So here we are on the VM Training YouTube channel. So we'll just grab a video from here. And we'll just let this video play in the background. You yeah, see, so it's currently playing. So uh, the quality is not very good as we're going through several RDP sessions and uh, through a console session. So that's to be expected, but we'll leave that running. And a couple of things we can see about this virtual machine here. It's currently running on ESX 17 and it has an IP address of 7.23. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a vSphere client session to the other ESX hosts, in this case 18 as well as 19. And it just tells us that's managed by Virtual Center. All right, we can see the VMs are running on 18 and we'll see that from 19 as well here in a second. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to our vCenter and we're going to right click on the VM, fault tolerance, turn on 
fault tolerance. Now a couple of things that we'll see here that are kind of interesting. Um, if we look on, all right, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that. So let's do this. Let's just turn off fault tolerance and I'll show you by going in here to the settings of the DRS and change it to fully automated or partially. We'll just set it to fully automated. Now when we turn on fault tolerance we won't get that warning. It's just going to power it up. Now you'll see there's a duplicate 17-1 right below it. It was there for a second and then it went away. Now when we click on this guy here you'll see there's a special fault tolerance box here. You'll see it's currently not protected and said that it needed a secondary. Now you see it's protected and the secondary location is currently on ESX 19. Now we can see currently it's not using any CPU and not using any memory. Um, that's okay. It's still building the secondary VM. So those will pop up here fairly quickly. You'll see though that once they do come up, they use a very small amount of CPU and memory because it's not actually downloading that video from YouTube and playing it on the secondary VM. What it's doing is it's downloading it on the primary VM and then logging the changes and shipping those across to uh, that secondary VM that we have running on ESX host 19. So we'll wait for those numbers to catch up here. It should just take just a second. If we look at ESX host 19, we'll see over here that we have 17-1 running over here and it's a secondary. And you'll see the icon looks a little bit different. It's, uh, it's gray versus the blue icon. You'll see we're still playing this video over here on YouTube. Let's just go back and see if we have any information yet. All right, so we can see that we currently have some statistics running on this particular VM. Um, and it's using the secondary VM is using 324 megahertz of CPU and about 245 megabytes of memory. Um, what's interesting here is the interval, what they call V lockstep, which is the lag time from the secondary v VM, from the primary VM, and the logging bandwidth, which is how much bandwidth it's taking to log the packets and ship them from the primary to the secondary. And we can see that the secondary is currently on ESX 17, and this one is currently running on ESX 18. We had a V motion which moved it around. Now, one of the new features that we have in ESXi 5.1, and you can see the video is still playing over here is if we go to 17, let's go ahead and open up a console to 17, we'll see the secondary VM that exists on that particular host. We can open the console over here and you can see that this secondary virtual machine is read only and we'll get that console here in a second. You can go over here, click on fault tolerance. We have several new features in 5.1. We can turn off fault tolerance to get rid of it completely. We can disable it or we can migrate the secondary. If we migrate the secondary, that just means we're going to change the host of where the secondary is at, which it's currently on 17. We could put it on 19, wherever we'd like to put it. And you'll see the primary is still on 18. You'll see it's gone here from 17. And if we look over on 19, the secondary now exists over here on 19. So we can do that. Another neat thing that we can do is we can go in here and we can actually do a test failover or a test restart of the secondary. So we can actually do a test failover. And when we look at this 17-1 over here, you'll see this is actually failed over. And now our secondary becomes the primary. So that's a new feature that we have available to us. Over here you'll see the secondary is currently running on ESX 19 and you'll see it's playing the video. You can see down at the bottom the time. Again that's the secondary playing the video. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to see this fail over and we'll see a couple of interesting things when this fails over. So this is currently running on 19. The primary is on 19 and the secondary is down here on 17. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to power off 19. 
So we can go down here and enter maintenance mode or do a, a shutdown, but that kind of gives the VM some warning. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go in and power it off. So we're going to open up a DRAC and we'll go to power management and we'll actually power off this system. Now you'll see a couple of interesting things here. You'll see that host will go down, host 19 will drop. You'll also see whatever VMs are running on there that are not protected will drop. So you'll see it's waiting for connection. The console's lost connection, but it's still up and running. You'll see the host will go dead here in the inventory. It's just gone, got a little red here. You'll see it's now protected. Let's look at the VM. Still waiting for the connection. You'll see there the host just went dead, not responding. Those VMs that were running on there are disconnected. There was my direct connection to the host. Now you'll see it shows me currently running on ESX 17. So let's open up a new console. And you'll see it's still playing. Hasn't missed a beat. So failed right over. Didn't have any any downtime, any lag time. It's still running there. And it, it's still protected. So it was running on 19. It's still now this is running on 17. 18 is still protected. So we can have a host failure and the VM is still protected. Uh, we could even fail over on 17 or 18 and it would still be protected and running over there. So we could have up to two host failures and still get this to work successfully. So those are some of the new features. Again, um, the test failover and the test restart of the secondary are options that we have available to us. We'll go ahead and power that server back on. DRS will then kick in and move the VMs around as needed. So that's fault tolerance. So that's fault tolerance. If you guys have any questions, just post them in the forum and we'll be able to respond to them on there. Thank you.